Have you ever been targeted because of your race? If you haven't, you're lucky because all around us, people are harassed and verbally abused due to something they have no control over, something that makes up who they are, at least on the outside. Whether we see it or not, or we purposely ignore it, it happens. Ever since the start of COVID-19, anti-Asian racism and xenophobia has reached a new peak. Today, I will be informing you all about what events have led to this sudden awareness, how many people have been affected, and what we can do to help as positive change individuals in our community. This talk is about a serious issue that more people need to open their eyes to. On March 16, 2021, a series of mass shootings occurred at three spa massage parlors in United States Atlanta. Nine people were killed, from which six were Asian women. The suspect, 21-year-old Robert Aaron Long, was taken into custody later that day. The suspect has been charged with eight counts of murder, but has not been charged with hate crime yet. The gunman told the police that his attacks were not motivated by race, and that he committed the violence due to sexual frustration. The county sheriff's office, Captain Jay Baker, told the media in a press conference that a sexual addiction may have fueled the crime, and he stated that Long had had a really bad day. A bad day is when something is wrong in your life and you feel depressed over it. This wasn't a bad day. It was a hate crime motivated by xenophobia. Let's call it what it is. Since then, Baker has received criticism from political leaders and civil rights advocates for making insensitive comments. Then the sheriff's office later acknowledged that the remarks had sparked anger, but apparently Baker had never intended them to affect anyone. And for obvious reasons, Baker is not a spokesperson for the case anymore. Former President Donald Trump, during his presidency, presidency repeatedly referred to COVID-19 as the China virus, among other offensive terms. This led to a whole lot of white supremacist groups to rise up and spread their hate to anyone who will listen. Another accident that happened recently is a shooting that happened in Indianapolis at a FedEx warehouse, the shooting by another young adult, possible white supremacist. Eight people were shot, from which four were sick elderly. As a sick myself, it is heartbreaking. These innocent people were just hardworking and honest people trying to make a living in a country where they couldn't even speak the language. These people were someone else's grandparents, but they could have just as easily been mine. That thought scares me more than anything else. And those nine victims were someone else's family, and they didn't deserve that hatred. Why are so many people dying because someone else doesn't like their skin color or ethnicity? Why does it matter to someone else what somebody else represents? These are questions I would like to ask all those criminals who cause these actions to happen and the people who continue to hate. Next, we have some statistics and some facts. Canada is a multicultural country with a diverse population in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Fear and misinformation about the virus has impacted the sense of personal and community safety of different cultural groups. As of March 13th, Fight COVID Racism has reported 959 incidents of anti-Asian hate crimes across Canada during the pandemic. And those are only the reported cases. Vancouver shows the highest rating of cases involving anti-Asian hate crimes, followed by Toronto. This is connected to us because we live right beside Vancouver. Vancouver saw a 717% increase in anti-Asian hate crimes from 2019 to 2020, according to a report released by the Vancouver Police Department. Justin Kong, the executive director of the Chinese Canadian National Council of Toronto Chapter, stated that the Asian communities have been scapegoated as being the ones responsible for the COVID-19 virus. Kong also said, the white supremacist kind of misogynistic tendencies that prevail in the United States, but also here as well, needs to be recognized. In a report released by Statistics Canada sometime in 2020, the agency wrote that the visible minorities who experienced harassment or attacks based on their race, ethnicity, or skin color has tripled compared to the rest of the population since the start of the pandemic. The largest increase was seen by Chinese, Korean, and Southeast Asian individuals. Hate crimes towards Chinese people has increased by 30.4%, Koreans 27%, Southeast Asian 19.3%, Filipino 15.5%, Japanese 15.3%, Arab 12.5%, South Asian 11.5%, and those statistics are constantly changing and going up. According to Project 1907, Canada has a higher number of reported anti-Asian hate crimes compared to the states. 65% reported incidents are cases of verbal abuse and harassment, while approximately 30% of these reported incidents are assault. This goes to show us that even though the shootings are happening in the states, we still somehow have a higher number of reported cases, which is horrifying. It scares me because if we didn't have asterisk gun laws, would there be shootings happening here in the middle of the day, like there are in the US? 
Now we'll be talking about how we can help Asian communities right now. This includes reporting incidents, becoming informed, and donating to groups that are trying to help. Here are five ways to help if you witness hate, according to the Stop AAPI Hate Organization. Number one, take action. Approach the targeted person, introduce yourself, and offer support. Number two, actively listen. Ask before taking any actions against the attacker and respect the other person's wishes, more under the situation if needed. Number three, ignore the attacker. Using your discretion, Stop AAA PI Hate says to attempt to calm the situation by using your voice, distractions, or body language. Number four, accompany. If the situation escalates, invite the targeted person to join you in leaving the area. Number five, offer emotional support. Help the other person by asking how they're feeling and assist them in figuring out what they want to do next. Stop AAAPI Hate also recommends supporting Asian-owned businesses, donating to causes that are helping the victims' families, reaching out to your workplace, faith-based faith institutions, schools, unions, and community groups to issue statements denouncing anti-Asian racism and encouraging people to report incidents they see or experience. The number one thing that everyone needs to understand is that the pandemic is not the fault of Chinese or Asian people. A scientific problem cannot be the fault of a group of people or a culture. As leadership students, students, or just people in general, we need to open our eyes to what is happening and stand against racism in all forms. Because we are today's generation, it falls onto us to change what past generations couldn't. Together, we can stop this hatred. Thank you for listening.